Hello and welcome to another episode of uh, experimenting with AI and Final Cut Pro. This is kind of episode 2.5 and it's going to be a bit shorter as well, but I wanted to just clear up a few questions and things that I've noticed uh, rather than just progressing with new stuff, which the next episode is going to have a killer application in it. Make sure you subscribe for that. But let's have a look what we did in the last episode. Um, we took this timeline which is um, 17 clips of various lengths. They're also trimmed. They're not the end media, they're actually trimmed. And what we did is pushed it through AI, said reorder the clips on by length. And we ended up with this, which is the same um, media, but they're all in length order, which is pretty clever. So that's one of the questions. Somebody said, well, why can't you do this manually with the XML? Trying to do that and calculate the offsets would take you an awful long time. Not impossible, but it would take you an awful long time. And what I'm trying to do with AI is use simple text, you need simple language, putting it into AI to do complex things. Yes, you can do them a long way around, but I'm trying to do it the easy and possibly lazy way around. Now, you might have noticed a difference between the two timelines. The original one, if we just call that up, and then we look at the timeline index, had 17 items. And the reorder one, if we just say control, had 16 items. Now, why did that happen? Not too sure, but I had a look at it and I can only think that what happened, it was a copy and paste error um, when I was um, putting together the XML from the outputs from Claude, because Claude has a limit on what it can output. Um, and that is driven by um, trying to print out the bookmarks as well. But the, I, went, <laughs> I went back to Claude and said, you seem to have missed out a clip. Um, can you just output all the XML again? And it was the same thing. It would have to segment the XML. So rather than go through that, um, I didn't do that. But I, it couldn't even join. I, I tried to get it to join all the XML up that it had output. It outputted nine or ten different lots of snippets of it and it couldn't join those up without segmenting them, if that makes sense. So that's another question answered. Is this a tool that you can use on a job? Possibly when it comes to graphics, but if you're talking about manipulation of XML with a project, it's it's kind of not really there yet. This is, We're experimenting with it. And you'll see that in the next episode where I do something that I think is quite clever. It works, but could you use it in a real project? Probably no. And one of the reasons is because of the bookmarks in the XML. So let's just have a look at um, what I said in Claude. Um, I, I didn't know what the bookmarks were, and I went to the XML documentation uh, that Apple supply. Um, and then I thought, well, why don't I just ask Claude? You know... <laughs> You've got a tool there. Why not? Why not ask it? And this is what this is what it came back with. These are the bookmarks here. It's this long string of alphanumeric characters that goes on and on and on and on. And you have one of those for each media item, and that tends to munch through your allowance that you've got when entering into AI. So if you've got um, you know ten, or we had 17, 17 of those, then all of those characters are going to um, gonna, you know, nibble away at your allowance. Um, even though I've got a pro account on Claude, um, sometimes you know it, it does stop and you, you, you hit a buffer or a limit. But let's just have a look at the bookmark. Now, the fascinating, the bookmarks, it says, it's the code that Final Cut Pro um, uses for file tracking. So it's, um, I mean, I was kind of half right previously in the previous video. Um, but it says the Mac uses it to maintain reliable links to files, even if they move, more robust than simple file paths, and it contains multiple ways to find the file, multiple file paths, volume IDs, etc. Um, and why base64 encoding? Uh, raw binary can't be stored in the XML, um, and it contains the metadata in compressed format, ensures special characters are properly preserved, etc. So it's basically an essential part of the XML, and I didn't realise that. I actually thought that, stupidly on my behalf, I thought that the way it would store it would be um, would be a file path. But there you go. 
you live and learn. And that's what these videos really are all about. It's like trying stuff out, seeing what works and what doesn't work. Um, okay, now if somebody said, why am I using Claude and not ChatGPT? Okay, um, because I started experimenting with Claude and I'm gonna show you something in a while that probably might spark off a few kind of like, I didn't realize it, you know, it did that. And that's really how I came into using Claude was via that path from a kind of HTML path. And then I suddenly went, well, why can't I use this with Final Cut Pro? I wonder if it works with Final Cut Pro XML. And obviously you've seen, seen what, I've, what I've done here. Now, ChatGPT, I tried ChatGPT and I haven't got a paid account with ChatGPT, but I asked what's the longest length of code that I can put in. It didn't give me an answer this time, but I've seen, I've actually asked it before, and it says it's something like 4,000 characters that you can put in. And, and as you can see here, it says kind of like, well, enter a large block of code and see if I can handle it. Uh, so I put in the XML that we use to um, start off with before we did the reorder. And it, it just says it's too, you know, I can't do that. I can't, um, it won't even go in. Now, that's pretty important because you probably couldn't put the XML in in 4,000 chunks because some of it references, you know, the, all the stuff at the top. Um, or maybe you can, I mean, I don't know, but it is a pain in the backside having to do the paste together of nine or 10 chunks of, of XML that I did with reordering the timeline. Last thing I want to do is have to manually chunk the XML to get that into ChatGPT. And as I said, I think it's about 4,000 characters, even on the paid plan. Uh, so if you know, please let me know. Um, I'm curious if you've got a play paid ChatGPT plan on there. Now, it also hasn't got a preview window, which if we go back to Claude, we can see on the right here, I've got a preview window where I can see um, code being generated uh, and other stuff. And just to say, when it comes to um, entering in code in Claude, the amount of characters, um, a bit of research, you can put an awful lot in, in Claude in one hit. As you can see, I've, I've entered in the, um, I've entered in the XMLs before. You can put five documents in at once. And from Claude's documentations, apparently you can put something up to the value or character count of the book, The Great Gatsby, which that's a lot. It might take a while to work it out, but you're talking about that amount of um, characters you can put in. And you might say, well, that's far too many. But if you think about it, with these bookmarks, if you've got something like, um, you know, a thousand, thousand media items um, in a, a sequence, then it's going to munch through that allowance quite quickly on there. Um, so, so right, that's a few things kind of answered on there and a few questions. Now, why again, wh why am I using Claude? Which way did I come to? I actually came to Claude because I was trying to uh, build websites by doing it automatically using HTML because it is great, Claude is great with HTML. And this might spark off a few things when it comes to creating graphics. Now, what do I mean? Best way to do it is to show you. So I'm gonna just start off with a prompt in Claude and we're just gonna build something quite quickly, hopefully. Um, and it's all gonna go, I haven't rehearsed anything, so we'll see. So let's go to Claude and go, I would like to build an animating HTML bar graph showing the top scorers scorers um, of goals in the Premier League football for the last season. Okay, I would like to build an animated HTML bar graph showing the top scorers of goals in the Premier League football for the last season. Okay, uh, top 10 scorers, otherwise we'll end up with a <laughs> huge graph. 
Okay, top ten score, top ten, uh, top ten scorers of goals in the Premier League football for the last season. Okay, fairly simple. You know, how long do you think it's going to take to take to build? Well, one way to find out. Okay, it's time to think about it. I'll help you create the animated value using React and Tailwind. Tailwind CSS is a new one on me. Okay, so it's going through Harland, Kane. Boom. It's done it. The preview window just previews the HTML. It's not animating, is it? It's not animating. But... As you can see, I built that in what maybe thirty seconds from tapping in the in the prompt, and now I've got this HTML which I can just copy and paste the code, all of this straight into a website, and it will give me this this bar graph. Um, now, one of the things also that somebody said uh, about the populations and the cities that I did the reordering, they said the data was wrong. Brooklyn wasn't a city. It might not be a city, but what I was trying to do is just show you the process, not the accuracy of the data. Obviously, you're going to put more prompts in with the data, and you're going to check the data. Um, you know, is this right? Is Harry Kane from Spurs, did he score 30 from 22, 23? I don't know. You probably end up checking it. But what I'm trying to do is I'm trying to show the process of what you can do. And really, this blew me away. This is where I came into AI with Claude and trying to get it in Final Cut was doing this with HTML. And I'm going to show you in a few more episodes further on maybe how to kind of take this building of graphics and go a bit further. Because for me, I wouldn't say I'm lazy, but if there's a really good way of doing something that looks good and I can just take that straight into a graphics application, then that's absolutely perfect. Why do the hard, why do the hard work? I mean, how long would it take you to build a bar graph in uh, a motion graphics um, package? I don't, I don't know. You know, obviously longer than the thirty seconds that it took took to build that. So there you go. I think that's answered quite a few questions. Um, you know, as always, just leave, if you've got some more questions, just leave them in the comments, and I'm trying to answer them. And what I'm trying to do is I'm trying to do the video and and show you what's happening as I'm going along. And the next video, yes, I've actually done something that I think is amazing. Will it work again? I don't know, but please make sure you see the next one as if you work Final Cut Pro, it's going to be very exciting. Okay, there you go. I hope that helped. I'll see you on the next one. Bye-bye.